Welcome to section 3.2. Okay, gentle people, in this lecture, what I want to talk about is amounts. So you can take a look at these two pictures and I can ask a very basic question. Which picture has the most? Now, the way that I state this question is very ambiguous. You could answer this in a lot of different ways. On one side, you can see that I have a dozen large nails or 12 big nails. On the other side, you see a dozen small nails or 12 small nails. So if I wanted to answer my question, which has the most number of objects? Well, both pictures have the same amount of objects. If I were to ask you which is the most in terms of weight? Well, it makes sense that 12 large things would be heavier than 12 small things. If I asked you which one has the most space? Well, then you can say that the picture on the right hand side has more space because the small nails take up less space. So what we're discussing here is amounts and how we describe amounts in chemistry and in general in science. Now, I want to specifically talk about chemistry and one of the ways that we count things. And one way we count things is we use a mole. So if you guys go to a shoe store, the shoe salesman he sells things in pairs. If we go to a baker, they may sell things in dozens. Well, chemists, since we deal with atoms which are really tiny, we need to use large numbers. And what we're going to do is use this quantity called the mole. Up until recently, the mole was defined as the amount of carbon-12 in 12 grams of carbon-12. And if they counted the number of carbon-12s in these 12 grams, they came out with this number. However, in 2018, they actually changed the definition of the mole. Right now, the mole is equal to just this number and is just that set number. It is no longer based on the amount of carbon-12 in 12 grams of carbon. Now, I should point out that the number didn't change only the way it was derived. And if you're interested in science, you might want to look up why this changed, and it has to do with how we define the kilogram. But I want you guys to get a handle of what I'm saying. If I tell you I have a pair of objects, that means I have two items. If I have a dozen of something, that means I have 12 items. If I have a billion of something, I have 1 times 10 to the ninth items. So when I say I have a mole of something, that means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those items. To give you guys an example, if I have a bicycle and I have a pair of bicycles, that means I have two bikes. If I have a dozen bicycles, that means I have 12 bikes. If I have a billion bikes, that means I have 1 times 10 to the 9th bikes. And of course, if I have a mole of bicycles, that means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd bikes. Now, I want you to be careful. A bicycle is not made out of one part. You guys know that a bicycle has two wheels. So if I say I had a pair of bicycles, that means I have two bikes, but each one of those bikes has wheels. And so I can say that I have four wheels if I have a pair of bicycles. The same can be said with a mole of bicycles. If I have a mole of bicycles, that means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd bicycles, but I have two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd wheels. So this becomes important about what you say. For example, it's easy when I say, one mole of carbon-12, but if I were to say that I have a mole of H2O molecules, that means I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd H2O molecules, the whole package. If I wanted to count hydrogens, well, I would times that 6.02 by 2 to get the number of hydrogens. If I wanted the number of oxygens, well, I just have to times it by 1, because there's only one oxygen per water molecule. And I can also apply mole to things that are not complete compounds. 
For example, one mole of Na plus ions is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Na plus ions. Now, when I started this talk, I started this talk by talking about dozen. A dozen large nails versus a dozen small nails. So here's that same picture, but instead of a dozen, I'm putting a mole of each one of these things. So this is a mole of mercury oxide, a mole of sucrose, sulfur, copper sulfate, pentahydrate, copper, and sodium chloride. What you can see is that these things take up different amount of spaces, but they're all the same number of particles. Well, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.